Let's rock and roll, boys. Hello and welcome to another Nintendo podcast. I am your host, Austin Cummings, and I am joined by one Mr. Matthew Schultz. Hey, it's good to be here. Hey, Matt. It is good to have you here. Uh, Matt, we're here at a p to talk a little bit about that, that big old Nintendo. But we're going to talk today... Big old N. Big old N, we call it. We're talking today, though, about something specific. Something that's really swept uh, the internet by storm. Matt, you might be familiar with the concept of the Pokemon. Do you track on this? I, I do, yes. The, yes, the, the, the Pocket Monsters the from Japan. Pocket Monster from the, Japan. That is the classic international sci-fi. phenomenon of right. 2000s, po- early 2000s. <laughs> late, late 90s. Late, late 90s, yeah. It is caught uh, America by storm. We've got Pokemania here in the States. Actually, speaking of late 90s things, did you see the <laughs> really already? Did you see uh, McDonald's announced like a nostalgia wave of. Oh my uh, God, what? They're so good. So it's like their new McDonald's Happy Meals. They're, they're, you pull this up right now. Listeners at home, pull over your car or just pull up that phone. It's worth the, it's worth the fee from the police and the possible endangerment like, of like old, like, it's like old happy little, meal like, toys. So, in, including the old box, like the little red box, little red like box. Really difficult to grip. Totally. Uh, yeah. You cardboard need cardboard arches. You <laughs> tiny, tiny, like uh, T Rex or oh, Raptor wow. fingers. You can pick it up. And it has uh, not. You know, no particular order. All the little but chicken nuggets. The best things. one being the chicken nuggets. It's so good. You got like cowboy yeah. chicken nug. You got like <laughs> miss also, chicken nug. <laughs> there's a the red Power Ranger. I know. Is they here. Have, there's the 101 Dalmatian in a car. So there's like there's a San Sanrio the uh, uh, Hello Kitty reading. She's being very studious. It's like so many good callbacks. There, there's a Beanie Baby, the platypus. Oh my god, yeah, the, the uh, that one was popular. Oh, that purple yeah, one. we uh, the Cummings family. I can tell you, uh, we still have a we have a basket uh, somewhere in the depths of this home filled with oh beanie babies and babies themselves. Is that um, Bugs Bunny from from the uh, Toon Squad? It is from the Toon Squad, <laughs> Space Jam. He's out there. It's like a great amalgam. They've clearly picked up some licenses that some of those could not have been super easy unless there's like some weird edge case on the cr- contracts for those where they like have yeah, they, like, exclusive marketing years, rights for these toys do yeah. <laughs> it's like spider-man where it's like as long as you make good on these every 25 years you retain the right to this chicken nug property but oh, um, yeah, this is going to be so popular this little red car this little race car mm-hmm. i remember having this or at least it was in our house Wow, it, yeah, 27. I know. It fills me with a warmth. I love the like the announcement trailer for it because all the toys like shoot through this portal, and it's just like they're sucked into the just the basic nostalgia portal and just shot straight into 2019 where we are. The McDonald's happy multiverse again. is real. <laughs> I it honestly is. It's um. I love having all these characters. I would. Lo- I love that they're combined again. Um. It's really a happiness to me. But similarly, now do we have McDonald's? Happy Meals back in the day for Pokemon the first movie. No, do we have Burger King Big Kids Meals <laughs> with the gold plated Mewtwo uh, cards, etc.? You bet we did. And oh yeah, what those? I thought those were also in the theater. Those were only at Burger King. Uh, Burger King had the toys in the theater. You get like a Pokemon card itself, but like you got the ball with the gold plated card that had like Mewtwo on it, or Pikachu, or maybe yeah. a, maybe you know maybe a Snubble or something worked its way in there as a little tease for Johto. Can't say. Um, comment just sound off if you got a snubble gold plated card uh, send it our way in any event pokemon matt it's back and we are on the precipice of the eighth generation of pokemon game when pokemon sword and shields hits nintendo switch on november 15th which is shing next friday at the time of recording so my sword and shield sound effects. clunk that's the shield <laughs> or guess which is which uh okay, uh, okay so matt let's just kick it off first now there's a lot of drama that's and that's good. what we're here to break down mainly dexit now we know we're, we know on amp we're not afraid to get a little political we've long established that's a strength of ours talking about politics but today we're not talking brexit we're not talking boris johnson we're not talking donald j trump this time we're making an exception we're sticking strictly to dexit but before <laughs> we do matt do you intend to pick What's a pokemon that? Yes or no for the Switch? 
Oh, absolutely. It's pre-ordered. It's already, that icon mm-hmm. is on my Switch right now. Austin, did you use one of the many vouchers oh, that you God. purchased for this? Wait. Absolutely, I did. Side, can I sidebar this real quick? Because those vouchers, mm-hmm. I had like convinced myself that I had bought two sets of them. Mm. And when I went to go pick up Pokemon and, um, and download Luigi's Mansion 3, yeah. I was sad to find out I only purchased one set of them. You know, I'm like, what do you, you're just, what do you mean I have to use real let money Let me tell again? you what the opposite side of that scale looks like, because I'll tell you what, it's also sad. There's one version where you don't buy enough, and there's another version where you're like, man, I really went I bought way too wild. many. <laughs> I guess Damon X Machina, hop on in, baby. We'll start you when the time is right. <laughs> um, but yes, the vouchers. I, so I, which version did you end up pre-ordering? I got sword. I went sword because well, sword, sword yeah. is just cool. Danny yeah. is confirmed for shield, so we know one person. That's good. It's going to be helpful. It's yeah. you know, it'll be interesting to see how many version differences really exist, and that kind of leads to big picture topics. So something that's been fascinating about the rollout of sword and shield that has somewhat been specific to this game has been the degree of mystery regarding firm announcements. Back when we had. Uh, sun and moon we had a number of specific large-scale nintendo directs that preceded their release now we're about to get more nintendo direct information but we're about to have this game and they haven't officially even revealed the looks of um the starter evolutions so what this has turned into is a bit of a pokey hysteria where people around the web are frantically kind of uh pulling together a serial killer ransom note like patchwork style of like you know would you like to see this person again uh type type diagrams of what we believe um pretty firmly to be the completed pokedex for generation eight in the gala region so yeah and this is so just like like you were saying there's some that are straight art from the website mm-hmm. from uh there's there's images from the actual from actual gameplay right um, then there's just some weird screenshot clippings it of gets like pretty a freaky. blurred image of what someone might think. <laughs> One is, is a... like a fever dream that someone woke up and just scribbled <laughs> on a page and scanned in as Pokemon 297. So, um, But I, I'll say this, because the information has been so little, they've been so tight-lipped about it, it's actually created this really fun kind of metagame for the community. That said, no one on the subreddit appears to be having any fun. People are very salty, but we'll get to that in a Dexit in a minute. But... I have found it to be very fun because what people have done is they're using all of these scans and renders and marketing material, blurry photographs, pictures of Sasquatch to compile <laughs> what they believe to be the the final list and then using their Pokemon detective skills, not unlike a certain um, a Ryan Reynolds voice detective that we know and love, um, <laughs> to kind of analyze which Pokemon made it in versus didn't. And that is all based, as we know, we've talked about before on the show, that Masuda, uh, one of the game directors for Pokemon, has m- announced back when the game was formally announced that not all Pokemon were going to be making it in. So um, as part of that, we know that some Pokemon are going to, unfortunately, get um, just like Scyther uh, will do, or HM number, uh-oh, not number one, number one's Flash. What's cut? What's HM for cut? What do we know it is? <laughs> I don't know. Uh... We're- 12. Hey, guess what? <laughs> the HM for cut is HM1. Okay, well, whatever. Grease. Whatever it is, I just put it in Grease. the box. So, <laughs> the, as such, we know Pokemon are going to cut from the game. And so people are using these things I've discovered to figure out which Pokemon made it, which didn't. One of the ways in which they're doing it is they're basically, they found images. There's like a, a list of Pokedex numbers. And they'll see, for instance, since each region has their own Pokedex, we know the Charmander evolution line. Back right. in the original Pokemon game, uh, the f- po- Pokedex begins with uh, Bulbasaur, Ivasaur, and then Venusaur before you get to Charmander, Charmeleon, and Charizard, uh, and as well Squirtle, Wartortle, and Blastoise. And um, because of that, when they see Charizard, or Charmander rather, next to a new Pokemon in the region, they know that it means that likely the Pokemon. Be- preceding Charizard, since it would be unlikely for Bulbasaur to come after Charizard on this other Pokedex, and he would likely come before Charmander on a new Pokedex. The absence of Bulbasaur, but the presence of Charmander does suggest that Bulbasaur, for instance, his evolution line, um, and Squirrel and others, has been cut. So yeah, it's been this fun. Game, right? Yeah, so people are like, 
there's a madness sweeping over people are discovering things that are cut and also things that made it and are losing their collective minds on the subreddit and just the internet uh writ large uh so um this has been termed recently dexit as in the pokemon that did not make the pokedex and there's a great link we'll put in the comments from polygon that uh, simply uh summarizes which pokemon did and did not make it from previous generations right. for instance some Pokemon that did not make it. Uh, big one, Mewtwo. Not going to be in not this in game. There. Okay? Not in it. Okay, not in it. Not going to do it. Conversely, a Pokemon that did make it, Seeking. <laughs> As in <laughs> Goldeen and the totally nondescript, just basically a fish Pokemon with the horn, Seeking. Not a favorite, but it did make it in there. Let's do this <laughs> game again. A Pokemon that did not make it. Okay. Lugia, the star of Pokemon the Movie 2000, a Pokemon that did make it. I'm um, looking at the list right now. Let's just choose one. How about Wobbuffet? <laughs> Wobbuffet. Good one. Good, good lame one. Here's another one. Um, how about Soul Rock? Not a good one. Not very loved. How about Lunatone? Not very loved. Drifloom? Not particularly. Loved. These are just um, no hate on those ones. Now, one I love, Litwick, and its evolution lineup to Chandelure. Beautiful name, beautiful Pokemon, beautiful fighter in Pokken tournament. Made it. Glad to see Pokemon that did not make it. Greninja, a Pokemon so beloved. It a is in Smash, and B um, there's even a full Pokemon anime film where basically Ash and Greninja fuse, uh, which is also the topic of one of my fan fictions, uh, into kind of and make an Ash Greninja character. And that character is not even going to be featured, nor Greninja, uh, in this game. So, a lot of Pokemon not making the cut. Over half of them, we believe Pokedex is set at 400, um, where mm-hmm. about a third of those, or maybe a yeah, quarter, Yeah, it's interesting, because I'm, I'm looking at it, a lot of the uh, starters of, like, Gen 2, 3, and 4, like, I think... Uh, all of yep. their starters are not in it whereas okay. we we get the we get the charizard mm-hmm. and and i wonder you know i wonder if we get the charmander line because is it because it's like it's the uk and it's like i don't know so, Charm, charizard's not a dragon but he looks like a dragon <laughs> right and like fits in with that lore it's like, very why, why? Right. It's why very do medieval we have this? feeling it, very fantasy is it to bring in those uh let's go uh, and Pokemon Go, like nostalgia fanboys, like into to yeah, like, that their stepping stone, Come in. right? You know him, you trust him. You got that yeah. black Charizard holographic card somewhere in your closet. Take it out, <laughs> take it to GameStop, <laughs> trade it in for five cents, and pick up a copy of Sword and Shield. I do not think GameStop accepts Pokemon card trade ins, and also, um, that's a great question. <laughs> but Matt, try, and, you should try, but you should try. Oh, and if not, send it our way. The but yeah. so, like to take a little, um, you, so you bring up the question, what, what was the rhyme or reason, right? What was the sword and shield? Mm-hmm. Why all these Pokemon were cut? And if we take a look at the subreddit for even just a moment, let's just cruise mm-hmm. let's down just some in. of the hot topics on there and just see what's blowing the heck up on our slash Pokemon. Okay? So, okay. Uh, for instance, the top, the, the, uh, top post right now, uh, as of today, we're uh, recording on November 6th, is basically somebody's like self mantra, calm down exercise, uh, words of wisdom to collect their consciousness and their mind and their body to uh, stay cool in the in this Pokemon <laughs> uh, fire fury. So their topic is uh, seems like once again we're spinning out of control. So don't forget you're entitled to your money, you're entitled to opinion, you're entitled you're allowed to like the game, you're allowed to dislike the game, you're allowed to participate <laughs> in the boycott, you are allowed to not participate in the boycott that just kind of speaks to uh the hysteria so another one is people talking about a boycott the mind dude that one that like uh, self calm down exercise that meditative uh chant mantra has twelve thousand upvotes there's uh nearly twenty seven uh thousand upvotes on the next topic about a boycott uh there's oh, um geez. over 500 for talking about the japanese fan base reaction basically saying that somebody knows a guy in japan who is also upset there is a um a lot of anger right now because of the uh super smash brothers direct today where sakurai when he's talking about terry uh who from final fight who's now in smash bros as of today um sakurai talks about the fact that there are other like npc characters that are background 
kind of window dressing on some on the new stage for Final Fight. Yeah. And Sakurai talks about, you know, it was kind of an extra level of work to animate these characters and uh, create th- models for them. But it's worth it for the fans. And everyone's kind of clinging to the Sakurai oh, quote as, and dunking on Masuda and the rest of the yeah. no doubt extremely Pokemon hardworking Game people Freak, at yeah. Yeah, Game Freak and Pokemon Company and uh, creatures who all are pulling, you know, pull together to make these things. So people are very salty again about 400 Pokemon and a lot of their favorites getting cut. Some people are upset because Pokemon like Charizard, who's already gotten a lot of limelight. And just in general in Pokemon, is here again, and he has a uh, Gigantamax form. He has a giant Charizard, very cool, massive form that's new to the game. Meanwhile, Bulbasaur and Squirtle, they're just out of here, not even present at all. And then yeah. um, other people are upset. So they're upset that a mainstay has made it and kind of filled a seat on the bench that may have, might have been to something more interesting. But then conversely, people are upset that some of the weird ones, like Seeking, etc., made it, and other ones didn't. And some people are upset Mewtwo is not in it, which, uh, you know, other people will probably likely be upset if Mewtwo were, because they're like, what about new legendaries? Whereas Mewtwo has had a lot of press, especially even Pokemon Go, there's been a lot of Mewtwo events yeah. this summer. So, point being, everyone's upset about something. And so, yep. uh, Matt, what are your kind of big thoughts right now on Dexit? On <laughs> Dexit. First of all, I love I love I love the internet's love creativity. The name. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> well, it was it was the the you know the net, what, there was like another term. Was it like the net? Like I don't know. Like mm-hmm. it was basically or like, something before this. It was like when everyone's yeah. like bring back the Snyder Cut for Justice League. Everyone's like bring back the national decks and things like that. Big push for the national <laughs> yeah. decks. And so, um, yeah. but yes, I do love Dexit. Matt, what are your thoughts on it? I mean, I, I, I get the, the Masuda and Game Freak are, are saying in that like, like, look, it's a lot of Pokemon and we would like you to focus on the 30 or whatever we're going to be bringing into Hopefully this Hopefully more and, than 30. Do we know how many are? 30 new ones, I'm saying. Like, you, yeah. you know, the... Is there the, only 30 the, new I ones? Do we know how many new ones there are? There's got to be more uh, than 30. Eight, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <laughs> they have 12 <laughs> by... Okay, maybe it's much more than 30. <laughs> okay, I got it. Got it, got it. Much, much more than 30. Probably more around, like, 70. Yeah, let's, um, let's go. Because there's also some Pokemon will have... This image... Uh, this leaked image that has this like uh, yearbook style roster of like you said like a ransom note mm-hmm. of different Pokemon images. There's a there's a top section and a bottom section. The bottom section has actually the um, Gigantamax versions mm-hmm. of certain Pokemon. And then there's the Gala like. region, the Gala region ones as well. Like there's Gala region Meowth, oh, and, Gala region forms. Yeah, yeah. and also right. some also have. Gigantamax form. So they kind of separated that way. But um, and again, we, like you said, the link will be in the bio. But uh, overall, like uh, for me, as someone who's coming back into the franchise after a while, that's awesome. I don't need to be overwhelmed by the insane amount of, of Pokemon that are going to be there. I'm happy they're going to be ones I remember. Some I remember from even, you know, black and white mm-hmm. uh, when I jumped back in. Um, and then. Like I'm going to be experiencing a lot of new Pokemon regardless. So right. to have a thousand, I would just be now. I know the end game for a lot of people and what they've enjoyed is at the very end, getting the national decks going through and playing right. and collecting everyone. And that's like been a fun, nostalgic way to end their Pokemon game experience for that generation. And I feel bad for all those people, but at the same time, there still is a lot to do in this game, and I'm just happy that we're getting it on a console. And Masuda yeah. has come out saying that there are going to be that that these Pokemon are coming back for future games. They're going to be in future Pokemon right. games. Right. We know they'll be in Pokemon be Home, games. which was kind of it's the catch-all between Pokemon right. Go and Let's Go and the 3DS installments like Pokemon Bank to store everyone. So things will have a home, no pun intended, for the time being. But uh, I do agree. Like, is there any? issue with having all the pokemon in it no like in a perfect world of course we had to be able to have every pokemon in here people would have right. their options now personally i one of my favorite entries is pokemon black and white and in that game you had to complete and defeat the elite four before gaining access to every pokemon that preceded that unova generation of pokemon so you were forced yeah. to play around with the new ones and i found them to be very exciting because i got out of my shell from the pre-existing kind of mainstays, my, you know, Alakazams right. and Charizards, etc., that I could rely on. I want, you know, it made me try something outside of my normal team. 
set up and I really liked that. And I, so, um, I like the limitation. Of course, in a perfect world, it would also have the option for people to do more. Um, but I understand I that they don't that they are not all in here. I think it's just important to, you know, I looking at the complaints. The main ones are that you know, Pokemon Company has stated that they're kind of focusing on animations and the models for the new Pokemon. There's a lot of skepticism right. about the degree of animations, and as things shown have not been mind-blowing they've been similar to things we've seen like in a pokemon stadium game very simple canned animations and then um the simple animations i should say and also um you know visually the game although is a definite cut above previous 3ds games is still not the most highly detailed entry you know people point to like some trees being of low resolution and water effects being minimal for a gear to swimming around it those things right. are true, but I think the make uh, the the game should be judged on its own merits uh, as hopefully it will be when it comes out next week, particularly by the you know games press. I'm hoping that people will be able to look at the game in terms of is it interesting to capture Pokemon while presented, you know, have interesting new systems. It is a you know all of those kind of foundational does it have a story and an interesting end game. You know, uh, how are the yeah. network features? Those types of things are more critical on a game by game basis and less judged against the expectation that it would have every Pokemon. Um, I, so I'm not n- nervous about it. I find the limitation. If anything, I have enjoyed this game of figuring out what's cut, what's made it, and seeing the yeah. big reactions. And some are humorous and fun too. So um, I think it would be definitely the Pokemon company's best interest if they announce some type of plan for like an, an occasional rollout of Pokemon, even if it were not specific to which Pokemon, if it were something like we intend to have, you know, seasonal releases of like returning legendary Pokemon, and they will also be accompanied by a couple of returning Pokemon. Like that could be an interesting little wrinkle. But right. It, and, and especially with the, those, what, those Gigantamax mm-hmm. to whatever those raids, you know, and that yep, like there's... we talked about this on this podcast before, where those could pop up at any time. They could, you know, create an event yeah. happening every month, similar to you know, all, you know, yeah, we were talking about uh, Destiny before this. We were talking about you know, yeah, um, exactly, uh, Splatoon. Even... You know, those events, right? You're always bringing people back into the game. They could easily find ways to be like, hey, remember that Pokemon that didn't make the list? Exactly. I mean, it would <laughs> be... It, they're here it, now. It could be fun to have something where it's like, right now in Pokemon Go, you can defi- defeat a Team Rocket uh, character on the map. And if you do, you get an opportunity to catch one of their uh, kind of possessed shadow Pokemon and, and recruit for your right. team. Well, what if you have a similar dynamic for the raids, which is also like Pokemon Go? And it's like, hey, here's Shinx in a raid. It's a Dynamax Shinx. And you defeat him and then you get an opportunity to catch it and then maybe it's a limited time thing maybe they cycle uh you know maybe there's promotional things like right now through pokemon pass which is an app uh for the phones where you go to like a gamestop or a target and you scan a thing and then get a code for the game um you know maybe they can work those things and i think they'd be if they made some type of little like commitment like that i think people would feel relieved like oh maybe there's a chance that you know my salamance will make it at the game my metagross make it my you know these pokemon that are you know hound doom pokemon that are long time favorites um because right now it does feel a little bit like a walled garden but i think a lot of people are pointing to those lack the lack of animation and things like that i think uh mm. people would be wise to remember or at least i would like to remember that for pokemon pokemon is an annualized franchise and yep. uh this is their first time going to a full style pokemon game in hd outside of the pokemon that made it in let's go so it's a large undertaking degree of animation or not just getting those character models and everything in there and also there's a whole rest of the game to make and balance and keep interesting and have work and these games do come out every year we have let's go last year you know which i think people generally enjoyed and we had the year before we had ultra sun ultra moon then we had sun and moon before there are just constant stream of pokemon games and uh things you know the alternate is we could wait years and years and years to get this game right i mean and it wouldn't necessarily be a better game if it has mill tank in it no and i right and for years people have been asking for a console style pokemon and it's 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 fantastic that the you know uh nintendo's 
I guess, direction with their hardware it converged with, um, you know, one of their handhelds, b- biggest, if not biggest franchises on their handheld console. And, and those two things get to come together finally. And we get to see the fruit of that for the first time in this mainline Pokemon game. And it's only going to get better from here. Like the animation styles, the, the stories, the, 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 the the depth and breadth of right. the world the, the, that it the is like character it's models be, the balancing the yeah, all abilities that stuff. the how open world it is or isn't like there i mean this is this is chapter 1 of the next era of pokemon on a dedicated console um as i mean i i, I don't know about you but I can't see Nintendo suddenly splitting off its um you know its its console market in the future again to be specifically one or the other even though we technically have that right now with the light which is definitely driving sales of of the switch at the moment um you know it's still going to be that played on any family of any nintendo family of system you know like they're going to be making games for all nintendo systems now there's not going to be this split thing and and that to me gives me hope for the future that yes maybe this game's not going to be exactly what folks were, were hoping for right away but there's we're getting it and it's going to be awesome and like that freaking reddit post said like you're allowed to buy it you're right. allowed not to it's a you're good it's to a good perspective on it. Or, exactly right. people are, are definitely uh like you people are allowed to be upset about it i'm choosing not to be i think that uh i personally enjoy working within the limitations and there is something fun that i find about being like oh if i encounter let's say Riolu, um, the mm-hmm. pre-evolution of lucario if i enc- encounter the pokemon i'm gonna feel like oh this is kind of a fun surprise i didn't know whether or not this pokemon was in it like that yeah it's gonna be kind of fun again i do think a, a, a staggered content release could be a nice way to alleviate some concerns from fans but i i do not mind this and i also want to bring up there are a lot of pokemon games that have not been mainland pokemon games that have a lot of people who love them uh who do not feature every pokemon chief among them people have a strong level of adoration for pokemon snap that was a game people <laughs> loved on the N64, and that game Old school. that game featured uh, fewer than seventy Pokemon at a time when the game when Pokemon had already <laughs> 151 and was about to you know that had certainly had the designs for the next set and d- featured uh, fewer than half and just similar to this game and I seldom hear people complain about the lack of pokemon and pokemon snap they just liked the game for the game and so i hope this game is judged by the same merits same thing goes for the pokemon mystery dungeon the all the all the chunsoft style uh dungeon crawling games like there are many of those they do not have complete pokedex like it is you know that's uh that is all right and people do not lose their mind about those they work with the pokemon that are available to them and so in any event i uh I hope it. I think this will blow over and people will largely forget it right. was a thing when it is out. I think what I'm excited really about the whole the, the game, and we'll get into some of the other content, was that like there's just so much n- great new um, experiences that come with it, like the you know the the user interface and and right. all those little creature comforts of how to play the game are. are have definitely been reworked, um, making the game just that much more enjoyable. I mean, they just released a, a video showing how to, you know, change your, you know, the nature using different types right. of mints of your Pokemon or changing the base stats or, or right. leveling up your Pokemon. Tons of quality um, of life stuff. That's really important. All that, qual- yeah, all that important. quality of life stuff is, is really exciting and makes the game even more accessible to, you know, and uh, players like me who are excited to jump into that again, but haven't in a long time. Yeah um like and yeah, I, it just the whole idea of the the leagues and the like one gym like one uh game having like certain minor league gyms and the other ones their major league gyms and they change based on the year like i like just i think there's gonna be a lot of cool experiences these two games are gonna offer yeah, i think the raids are, are neat i think being able to dynamax any pokemon yeah. and having certain ones have uh, gigantamax that are kind of like the mega evolutions that are just like a fun twist i think having the gala region forms is really fun right and clever they showed off the or there's the leak of Corsola, um, and it's like there's Corsola, which is, looks like a, po- a coral Pokemon. There's like a ghost version, which is kind of like Coral Reef, kind of like a spooky Coral Reef nature yeah. message, at least <laughs> is how I'm interpreting it. There's like, there's, you know, wheezing of Pokemon pollution now, is, now has a big steam stack that's like, a you know, kind of like in the Industrial Revolution, which of course was <laughs> you know, very foundational for uh, Europe and, uh, you know, England particularly. So, 
it's interesting and fun. I love that they're there's going to be a lot of care into those things anecdotally i with that pokemon pass app i booted up sun and moon the other day to download a pokemon i had gone from completing this uh you know going to a store thing and so yeah. just like the ui and whatnot in the old 3ds game although that's a great game very dated and it was dated when it came out it was already like wow these are a lot of menus it's an awkward online structure nintendo mm-hmm. games always have an awkward online i don't know if this will be a huge improvement in that regard but just the menus and the saving and accessing your box is way better in Let's Go and way more user friendly. I don't think it'll be that casual as it is in Let's Go, but that shows a forward thinking element, which is a lot on its own to crank out a year after Let's Go and let alone all these other mechanics. And I look forward to seeing how the game will be judged, you know, on those merits. But one it is. Yeah, it- go ahead. I was gonna say it's just a it is a unprecedented time where the the fandom of all ki- types of pop cultural things, right? You know, you have the Star Wars fandom, right. the Marvel fandom, you've got all these major game fandoms and but have such a voice now. So much so that the Pokemon company has on on the Pokemon website for Sword and Shield released a statement addressing this like mm-hmm. um, you know, the sentiment that the fans have. And they, you know that 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 statement. You know they they say like, look, this is this is what we. You know it does take. It's very difficult. Please know we're putting our whole heart and soul into the game. Like there's something that's really cool about the amount of voice that that you know the fandom has now, and also just so sad to see that. I don't know. Like yes, this this company they are one of the largest like franchises in the world in terms of uh, gaming and and. Uh, like in terms of IP, Pokemon's massive, and yes, they they make a lot of money and all that. But I still believe them when they're yeah. saying, you know, that they're they're pouring their heart and soul into this game. And yeah, we get just... a game every year from this company, and so I feel right. for the people who dedicate, I'm sure, a huge number of hours, particularly as this game, you know, is very close to launch now, um, and who have to continue to support it. And it'll be game that's patched, and we'll have events, and you know, that is a huge responsibility. I have no doubt they're working really hard. And so I think posts like that one on Reddit are really nice that try to keep it in perspective because it is totally fair to be disappointed that a Pokemon you might yeah. love or a Pokemon you might have brought through every generation, you know, is is not featured in this game. It's totally fair to be disappointed. But I think the anger and vitriol and hyperbole uh, is toxic in a way that really victimizes the people of that are creating these these games for us the pokemon company as a whole and so i uh look forward to seeing how it's received i'm hoping it's received um like any game i hope it's great but um the other little aspect to it is that i also look forward to seeing the sales and this is where the salty aspect of me comes in which is that i have matt a uh, a firm belief that this game is going to sell extremely well and that oh, for sure uh so you might recall and we may have spoken about it before back uh for i believe modern warfare 2 but call of duty game uh back in the day when it was announced yeah. for the 360 generation of consoles it was it came to light that the game would not have dedicated servers for right multiplayer and that it'll be hosted peer-to-peer and people uh call of duty was really entering the competitive scene and people were really losing uh their mind about it about the fact that, that you know that this was a travesty and how could infinity ward or whomever the developer that one was uh do this to them and so people you know created these boycott forums this is a pre-reddit era uh that really were popular and uh there was this really great post on the day that particular game let's say modern warfare 2 came out where someone takes like a screen grab of the people in the forum saying let's boycott this game and then the people on their friends list being these people showing their steam or xbox activity what they're playing and all of them are like playing more for two playing more for two and so um yeah. i think there's going to be a very large degree of that for people that you know you see some of that on reddit where people are like well i am going to buy it but i'm not going to like it or i'm going to buy it used or whatever it's like uh, although the use thing does enter some question marks as to how the game is tracked through MPD, it still counts as a sale. GameStop is still yeah. going to register that for themselves as a sale. It is not a boycott. Like, if you play the game, you are playing the game. And those are, the, you know, I respect people who want to vote for their wallet, with their wallet, but I think this game is going to sell extremely well. Um, so, uh, Matt, I pulled up some numbers of previous Pokemon game sales. We've talked about an AMP before. 
some of the sales of the mainline Pokemon games and how crazy wild they are. So let me just go over some of these numbers for you. Okay, so okay. first off, the original generation of games, red, green, blue, yellow, sales of millions, uh, 59.52 million. All right. Uh, gold, silver, and crystal, uh, 42.21 million. Ruby and Sapphire, 36.77. The Diamond Series, 25.27. Black and White, 24.16. X and Y, 16.42. That was early in 3DS life. 3DS was kind of struggling out of the gate. Sun, Sun and yeah. Moon, 24. Uh, 0.74 million and then let's go on the switch again with a very small install base in, in comparison to all these consoles uh, 11.28 million huge massive <laughs> massive numbers also uh let's go a lot of people were upset about the casual large changes that were made to that game we talked talked about them a lot in the show things we liked things we weren't in love with um sold extremely well the nintendo switch sales similarly have broken yet another milestone uh, and I found this number to be crazy. We got news this week that the PlayStation 4 has surpassed the PlayStation 1 to be, uh, and the Wii, to be one of the best-selling consoles you know, of all time, uh, namely behind the PlayStation 2, which will just never be topped. It was also a DVD player when it came out, massive success. And that <laughs> right. sold over 100 million units. Uh, the Switch came out, of course, in uh, spring of 2016. Uh, Matt, are you able to pull up the sales for that one or what uh, the metric is just passed? uh let's see 41 million 41 million so really and that's and that's two million switch lights included in that yep and that was well and that's that's two million switch lights in the first 11 days of it's of it being on yeah, store shelves it's wild. so we're well past that and this, so certainly this hardware is creating a a massive yeah. um shift in moving the product more um and it getting people's interest in in nintendo switch also um, so I own stock in Nintendo, uh, about, uh, what do I own? Like 50 shares. Nice. Um, and they saw a 5% bump, uh, when Nintendo released its, uh, uh, quarterly earnings report, uh, a couple weeks ago. And that was right as, uh, they were reporting on the first 11 days of sales <laughs> yeah. for, for the Switch yeah, Lite. Yeah, it's 14.2% so. over the same, uh, period in the previous period so it's huge uh huge climb in that front they intend to right. sell something like another 10 million uh by the end of their fiscal year uh we're you know the holiday sales are just really going to start getting going this is going to be some you know switch is going to show up in a lot of marketing i'm sure with bundles as we move into black friday and closer Absolutely. to dollar so i mean you, you got the the pokemon uh switch light uh is already out right right it's, out it's, or already no, out. it's coming out in november on, i think oh, it is out. out on friday okay so <laughs> Well, by the time you're listening to this, <laughs> right, it's come, well out. Came out a year ago. <laughs> um, yeah. Also, by the way, side note: every time I see the blue switch light, I'm always like, oh, I wish I would have gotten the blue one. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Here's the here's the wonderful thing. There's always going to be another switch version, and there's always going to be another color and sale and whatever. And so, I think there's many more switches in your future. And you're going to be in line. That said, yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah. I, it was all I could do to cancel my Pokemon pre-ordered one. Um, Oh, I man. still, have, of course, my yellow switch light, which I have here uh, for the video podcast. And uh, the w- Matt, uh, as a final final aside, as we close the episode, um, sure. what are your impressions? Well, let me finish this, I guess. Pokemon, do you think uh, it's going to top the NPD for the year uh, in sales? If we had to had to guess, well. Do you suspect it'll be a top selling game of 2019, even with a month and a half on the calendar remaining? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, people are. I was reading some of the some of the forums and some of the articles, and uh, I was reading up on Reddit and like a bunch of people who were responding to some of the Switch Lite sales. They were like, "I bought it early in those first 11 days. Bought multiple for the Christmas holiday. Um, yeah, to make sure I got one." Especially because I know Pokemon's coming out, and my son, daughter, myself want to have this as a, as a gift. Like, for sure, absolutely, Pokemon will be in the top uh, of, of of sales for 2019. Um, I'm sure. Uh, I and I don't know if it's top 10 or top five, but it certainly will be up there. And I think for a number of reasons, but I think on aside from just being a Pokemon game, it's again a Pokemon game that you can play on your TV a full mainline game and people have been waiting for this um coupled with some shiny new handheld hardware from nintendo like it's a win yeah i think so, so. too i think 
you know, I think it's good that people are vocal that they would like all the Pokemon in the game. Right. I think it's important that people will be respectful of the game, and if they choose to not buy it, then they should not buy it. Um, but I think this game's going to sell extremely well. I hope it is, you know, a strong entry. And if it isn't, then I also, you know, hope that the reception is appropriately negative and that the things are addressed because also, in fairness, Pokemon has also been a series that, you know, uh, is a little stagnant, little, little stagnant and it has it could use feet. network features that are updated and more options for trading battling, which were not that good. And let's go. And, you know, mo- a, a better interface for making announcements and events and keeping things fresh. And there are so many games of service like Destiny right now that are really strong. That's an avenue Pokemon could really succeed in if they made... Especially for a company as large as Game Freak backed by Nintendo publishing its games. Like, it's... Right. Like, it's like they, come on. They also have an opportunity to really do something interesting with it, so I hope that they do. All right, that brings us to the end of this particular episode of ANP. Thank you so much for listening, and please check us out on the YouTube. But this has been it from Austin Cummings and Matt Schultz. We'll see you next time on the internet. <laughs>